Welcome to today's Skinny Podcast here on Local 12. Pleased to be joined by Mark Sheldon from MLB.com, Reds beat writer. And um, Mark, things have kind of quickly started to spin in a bad direction for, for this for this baseball team. Could you could you see it coming? Were they piecemealing things together when they were hovering above 500? Um, or or has this surprised you how very quickly now this team's a couple games under 500? I guess I've, I'm, I mean I know things haven't been going swimmingly, uh, but it's been kind of like that all season. It's been a couple steps forward, a couple steps back. I don't I don't necessarily share your your view that things are spinning out of control and going down the toilet. Uh, I mean the, the team as of a couple of days ago at least was one of the you know is in the you know technically with the season had ended after only 45 games, it would have been one of the wild card teams. So it the National League in general has been kind of a weird. Uh, mix of soup this year. It's uh, a lot of teams are under 500. A lot of teams are scuffling. The Cardinals are making it look really easy on their end, which is uh, making the division look not as competitive. But uh, you know, I, I just don't. I don't think it's going down the drain. I, there's obviously a lot to work on. There's some things need to get better on both uh, offensive and, and pitching. But uh, you know, it's still a young season. Obviously, your role as Chapman, what's happened the last couple of days is, is nothing more than a hiccup. It, that's going to happen to the game's greatest closers. No one's going to go um, 40 for 40 or 50 for 50 in, in saves. So, so that part aside, the bullpen, as we know, has been documented, has not been very good. Um, it, it took a while for them to make a decision on Kevin Gregg. They finally made it. Is, is that one piece of the puzzle? And I'll ask you, what, what took so long to make that decision on Kevin Gregg? I, I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that uh, there was some money involved if he's making a million and a half. I think much of it is just that he's a veteran and they they didn't uh, you know they didn't uh, the way Brian Price kind of put it the other day yesterday was they didn't just take a flyer on him. They felt like he had a track record that they count on taking away last year when he was coming back from a surgery, but the year before that they 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 thought he had good stuff and they'd seen him before so. I think they were trying to show a little bit of loyalty. There's also the fact that, they're, honestly, the the options in Triple A aren't, Very aren't limited. that great. There yeah. wasn't what? Very limited. limited. Exactly. I mean, now on the other hand, I mean, if they could have probably done some more outside the box thinking with the relieving situation. I mean, if they wanted to move Kevin Gregg or anyone else, you know, you start looking at some of the young guys. Or you know, Rice Ellie Glacius comes to mind and. Before he got called up as a starter, Michael Lorenzen, and then you have guys like Nick Travieso and Robert Stevenson. I don't. I would look at those people, and maybe consider them as part of the, the pool of guys you could select if they have to make some more moves. But uh, you know, they gave Kevin Gregg six weeks, and it didn't work out. Obviously, you mentioned some of the young guys, and, and there's some bright spots in there. Anthony Viswathani's pitched pretty well. He's struggled a bit of late, but he's he's pitched pretty well to this point. He is going to be the, the starter tonight in Tuesday night's game. Uh, Lorenzen's thrown the ball pretty well to this point. It looks like we're going to see Iglesias again. Uh, you know, w- when some some bad has happened, like an injury to Homer Bailey, it does open a door for some guys to at least get a shot to show what they've got. Certainly. And, um, you know, a couple of years ago, if they had this happen, they had a little bit more depth to deal with. So it, it's a little bit of a harder thing to take when you have – uh, Mike Leake and Johnny Cueto, and then you have three guys, you know, Jason Marquis, who is coming back from his injury, and, and you know, he's not a, you know, no, he's, a, he's a number five starter, number four starter type of guy, and then you have two young guys. So it, it is a lot to put on, on, on a rotation, and Di Scalfani is kind of struggling the last three starts, and, and Lorenzen's been kind of up and down through his three starts. But it is an opportunity, and I, I would imagine, especially for the two kids, that with their stuff, they should – if they do everything they're supposed to do, they should be pretty good. As I mentioned, it looks like Iglesias is, is going to come back up here, Mark, and, and um, uh, get another crack at it. Do you Would you expect him to stay as possibly a reliever and stick around at this time, or, or do, do they need to continue to see him in a starting role in some way, shape, or form? That's a great question. It's In my opinion, I, I would advocate that they should take a hard look at having him stay as a reliever seeing what they can get from him. I mean, he's going to be capped to an innings limit because he hadn't pitched at all last year while he was in his transitional phase out of Cuba. So if the innings are limited and you're, you're paying a major league money anyway, I, I would say make, make the most of the innings he does have as a reliever because, you know, innings, whether he's in AAA or in major league baseball, it's the same. They're innings. So that's 
that's what I would do, but it, it's hard to say. If they, especially this week, if he does start uh, tomorrow like I expect, then they wouldn't be able to use him for three or four days. So they would they would be a little short in the bullpen, but I would take a hard look at having him be uh, a reliever in the bullpen. Tony Singrani has started to fill that, that kind of eighth-inning role, if you will, for lack of a better term, the setup role. Um, it, can he be used more than that? Would you see Brian Price maybe using him for more than just an inning? I know he's kind of touched on that a little bit of, depending on matchups, using him for a little more than an inning, maybe using Jumbo Diaz, depending on matchups in, in that regard. Um, does Sangrani need to be used more, in your opinion? Yeah, I mean, they're starting to. I think I was, you know, like everyone else, it's kind of a mystery why they were holding him back when their bullpen was kind of up in flames and they, they were holding him for long relief roles. I didn't get that, but it, it's uh, for now that they passed that. He has been used a lot more, and he looked great uh, on Monday night with the uh, – threw all fastballs and struck the side. It was very nice to see. Uh, in Chicago, they did actually use him for more than one inning, but it didn't go very well. He, he walked uh, two batters in a row on eight pitches. So uh, I would have suspected that with his arm that he has the ability to go two, maybe even three innings if they need to, but I think in the kind of setup role he is, that they can't overuse him either because a lot of people, like the night that Kevin Gregg made his fateful last appearance, they were wondering why Stengrani or Diaz weren't in the game and the team was behind him, even though it was only by a run, they were kind of limited because right now kind of think Ronnie's their guy that kind of bridged uh, the lead from the starter to the Chapman. And someone, you know, you can't use him in every single situation. So uh, I would imagine they're going to find ways to use him, but he's going to be probably be the eighth inning guy, right-handed or left-handed, and do the best they can with that. Certainly has the arm to get to get both lefties and righties out. The numbers show that he can uh, he can certainly do both. Talk about the lineup very quickly. Um, the outfield is scuffling. Two guys in particular really scuffling, and that's Jay Bruce and, and Billy Hamilton. I know you've probably gotten tweets and emails on this. I have as well already about would it do Jay Bruce any good at all to go down to Louisville. So I'll ask you, would it, and and is there any chance that that would take place, or do they just have to hope he finds a way to snap out of it at the big league level? Yeah, I don't see any scenario where he goes to Louisville uh, at all. Number one, I, I think because of his veteran status, they, he has to agree to it. I think so, yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't, I don't see that happening. And I, 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 I know his numbers. I, I thought for sure that now that his knee was better and, and things like that, I, I would have, I highly expected him to have a better uh, performance than he's had to this point. But it's one of those things. He's just going to have to work it out. There's no, for as much as people complain about him and, and his lack of production, there, there is no one that could replace him and provide what he does at, at, a, at his normal level. So you just got to hope he works it out. There's really no other move for them to make there. I mean, there's nobody – who are you going to call up? Or, or who are you going to put in the lineup? If you look at what the guys on the bench have done, it's not like anyone is, yeah. is ripping it there either. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Skip Schumacher, is, is, you know, he got a couple of hits the other day as a DH, and, and you know, Brendan Bosch is still trying to find it. Uh, Christopher Dominguez is down in AAA after uh, – you know, he got a you know limited at bats, but I mean, none of those names are Jay Bruce, who's a three-time All Star and hit 30 home runs a year. You got you have to hope that he gets out of it. That's that's if you're the Reds. And as far as Billy Hamilton, he needs to get on base more and, and be the, you know the, the quintessential leadoff guy. He's, you know, cut, hitting around 200 isn't going to cut it. Yeah, and I guess in that regard, we're, we're now a couple of years into this, and the on-base percentage continues to be an, an issue when you look at him. I'm sure he's worked at it. What can he do? What can they do to, to make him more cognizant of that? I mean, he is trying. I mean, he has the ability. Uh, the big thing for him has been the bunting. Uh, it hasn't worked out well like it did last year, but he does work at it. He's, he's not a guy that's in the major leagues and complacent. I can tell you that. He, he's there early. I saw him in Pittsburgh one time. Bunting. Sometime, one time here in Great American Ballpark, he was out. Him and Negron, pretty much the only two of them, and, and uh, Coach was uh, putting balls in the machine right up point blank, and he was trying to bond them. So it, it's something they do work on. I mean, <clears throat> he's still a younger guy, so it, it does take a while for things like pitch recognition and, and, and learning how to work work with, with, with what they're being given and trying to get walks. But he's not a guy that's going to be a walk guy like some other leadoff hitters. He's a guy that's going to have to you know put the ball on the ground, use his speed, get on base, and then steal. And that's I, – I can – you know, I know people wanted to have a guy with a 350 on base percentage in that spot, which is what anyone wants. But I think with Hamilton, you could settle for less 
if he can get on base more with, with the uh, with the ground game and then run you know run around second and third base with you know the base dealer. Yeah, no question. When he gets on base, even if it's a thirty percent clip, there's a pretty good chance he's going to disrupt other teams. Correct. Mark, I appreciate it very much. Uh, appreciate you checking in and, and look forward to, to talking to you again here down the road and uh, hopefully we'll do it again here on the podcast. Excellent. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's Mark Sheldon from MLB.com.